Read your Bible. Hi, this is Rod Saunders from Jew and Greek. Do you read your Bible on a daily basis? Many of you do, I'm sure, but the fact is most Christians don't. But regular Bible reading is essential for your spiritual health. Now, I'm not saying that all Baptists are like this, but when I was a kid in the Baptist church, we all took our Bibles to church and read along with the preacher, and then we took them home and put them on the shelf to collect dust until the next time we went to church. The only person in the family who read the Bible was my grandfather, who taught Sunday school at his church, so he had to read it to prepare his lessons. But the rest of us just got by on whatever Bible we heard at church on Sunday. Due to ignorance, my mother fell into the belief that Edgar Cayce was a prophet and Atlantis was a lost civilization that was destined to return. My sister developed a fascination with astrology and reincarnation. We had a Ouija board in our home, too and we were church-going Baptists. These things began to influence me. Then when I was 17, I started attending an Assembly of God church, and I discovered that these people knew the Bible. They told me that astrology was of the devil, and that Edgar Cayce was a false prophet. Once I was discussing John the Baptist with a guy, and I told him that Jesus said John the Baptist was the reincarnation of Elijah. He told me that I was wrong, because the Bible doesn't teach reincarnation. It teaches resurrection. I asked him, what's the difference? He explained to me that reincarnation was a Hindu concept of working off karma by returning as a different person or an animal. But resurrection is being brought back to life as the same person where you then face judgment. I felt a bit ignorant that I didn't know this, but nobody had ever explained it to me. One day I was at the home of a girl I was dating and her mother and I got into a discussion about Samson and Delilah for some reason. She was telling it like it was a Bible story. I blurted out, that's not in the Bible, that's a fairy tale. She said, no, Rod, it's in the Bible. It's a Bible story. Samson was a Jew who took a Nazarite vow and didn't cut his hair. He fought the same Philistines that David fought. I was embarrassed. I thought Samson and Delilah was like Jack and the Beanstalk. I was so ignorant about the Bible, but I didn't stay ignorant. I started reading my Bible, even though all I had was a King James Bible. I eventually got a living Bible paraphrase, and that made it a bit easier. I was reading it constantly, and when I had a question, I asked my mom. She tried to answer, but she soon realized that I needed a study aid, so she got me a Halley's Bible Handbook. Now, by today's standards, Halley's Bible Handbook is pretty basic. But back then, it was a godsend to me. Anytime I had trouble, I would just pull it out, and usually I would find the answer. I eventually started memorizing scripture. At one time, I had the entire books of James, 1 John, and Jude memorized. I can still quote a lot of it. My family thought I had gone off my rocker, I guess, because I was always talking about what the Bible said. And even though we were supposedly Bible-believing Christians, we just never talked about the Bible. Eventually, I attended Bible school and got a good foundation in basic theology. One of the instructors there told the students to get a good book on systematic theology. I ended up getting Charles Ryrie's Basic Theology, but I've acquired others since. I started reading about eschatology and dispensationalism, church history, hermeneutics, and the aberrant doctrines of Christian cults or other religions. I became a bit of a theology geek in time. Instead of being the guy who asks the questions, I found myself being sought out for answers on the Bible. I've come a long way since those days of being embarrassed in front of my Assembly of God friends, but I still enjoy learning and feel so ignorant about certain areas of study like the Tabernacle of David or the Ark of the Covenant. I've always focused more on the New Testament, but the Old Testament still holds a lot of value for New Testament believers. My point in telling you all of this is to emphasize that you can learn. When you start off reading the Bible, it seems strange because the cultures were so different back then, and you have to learn about the people and their beliefs and customs in order to understand a lot of the Bible stories. This takes time, but if I can do it, you can. You just have to purpose in your heart that you're going to commit to reading the Bible and understanding what it's saying. As I approach my golden years, I want to pass on what I've learned so that future generations can benefit from my experiences. 
In the closing section of Halley's Bible Handbook, there is an admonition for Christians to read their Bibles and become familiar with what it's telling us. Halley wrote this over 50 years ago, but I think it still applies today. Everybody ought to love the Bible. Everybody. Everybody. Yet the widespread neglect of the Bible by churches and by church people is simply appalling. Oh, we talk about the Bible and defend the Bible and praise the Bible and exalt the Bible. Yes, indeed. But many church members seldom ever even look into a Bible. Indeed, would be ashamed to be seen reading the Bible. And an alarming percentage of church leadership generally seems to be making no serious effort to get people to be Bible readers. We are intelligent about everything else in the world. Why not be intelligent about our religion? We read newspapers, magazines, novels, and all kinds of books, and listen to the radio and watch television by the hour. Yet most of us do not even know the names of the Bible books. Shame on us. Worse still, the pulpit, which could easily remedy the situation, seems often not to care and generally does not emphasize personal Bible reading. Individual direct contact with God's Word is the principal means of Christian growth. All the leaders in Christian history who displayed any kind of spiritual power have been devoted readers of the Bible. The Bible is the book we live by. Bible reading is the means by which we learn and keep fresh in our minds the ideas that mold our lives. Our lives are the product of our thoughts. To live right, we need to think right. We must read the Bible frequently and regularly so that God's thoughts may be frequently and regularly in our minds, so that His thoughts may become our thoughts, so that our ideas may become conformed to God's ideas, so that we may be transformed into God's own image and be made fit for eternal companionship with our Creator. We may indeed absorb Christian truth in some measure by attending religious services, listening to sermons, Bible lessons and testimonies, and by reading Christian literature. But however good and helpful these things may be, they give us God's truth secondhand, diluted through human channels and, to quite an extent, obscured by human ideas and traditions. Such things cannot possibly take the place of reading for ourselves the Bible itself and grounding our faith and hope and life directly in God's Word, rather than in what people say about God's Word. God's Word is the weapon of the Spirit of God for the redemption and perfection of the human soul. It is not enough to listen to others talk and teach and preach about the Bible. We need to keep ourselves, every one of us, in direct touch with God's Word. It is the power of God in our hearts. Powerful words. When I read that as a teenager, it had a profound impact on me and I became a Bible reader. That's how I trained myself to think in terms of what God said about life, faith, morality, character, and service. Halley spent more than half a century preaching and teaching God's Word. His accumulated notes eventually were published by Rand McNally in 1927 and became a popular seller until the explosion of Bible commentaries in the 1970s cut into its market share. Still, Halley's words were a strong rebuke to people who have been apathetic toward Bible reading and Bible study. To whom much is given, much is required. It's never been easier to learn about the Bible than it is today. But along with that blessing comes an awesome responsibility. As believers, we have a spiritual obligation to take advantage of what God has provided for us to learn, grow, and equip ourselves for what He has called us to do. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up, share it, and subscribe. And if you didn't enjoy it, you probably aren't reading your Bible. We'll see you next time. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like of the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his 
ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is...